let's be brutally honest for a second, because that's the only way this whole situation makes sense. For the past year, the tech world wasn't just expecting a new Apple TV. It was convinced it was inevitable. Leaks lined up perfectly. Supply chain whispers all pointed to the same window, and analysts were already writing their victory laps. December 2025 was circled on calendars like some kind of tech holiday. New hardware, refreshed design, smarter Siri, maybe even a new remote. It felt locked in. And then Apple did the one thing nobody expected. Nothing. No teaser. No press release. No quiet launch. Just silence so loud it felt intentional. It wasn't just a delay, it was Apple completely vanishing from the conversation, leaving fans, analysts, and everyday users starring at each other wondering what just happened. That silence is what triggered the frustration. People started asking real questions. Is Apple TV dead? Did Apple lose interest in the living room? Should they just grab a Roku, Fire Stick, or Google TV and move on with their lives? For a company that prides itself on momentum and confidence, Ghosting an entire product category during the most important shopping season of the year feels insane on the surface. But here's the thing. Apple doesn't accidentally leave billions of dollars on the table. They don't miss holiday cycles unless the alternative is strategically better. And that's where the real story begins, because this delay isn't a stumble. It's a setup. What looks like hesitation is actually restraint. Apple realized that releasing a modestly upgraded Apple TV in 2025 would have been a short-term win and a long-term disaster. The tech landscape is changing too fast, especially with artificial intelligence becoming the new baseline expectation for consumer electronics. A faster chip and a tweaked remote wouldn't cut it anymore. That kind of release would have locked the Apple TV into a future it couldn't grow into. Instead of shipping something safe, Apple pulled the emergency brake and decided to rebuild the Apple TV's role from the ground up. Not as a streaming accessory, but as the central nervous system of the modern home. The ghost of December 2025 tells us everything we need to know. Apple didn't skip the holidays because they couldn't ship. They skipped them because the product wasn't finished philosophically. The company is in the middle of a massive internal shift toward Apple intelligence, where AI isn't a cloud service bolted on later, but something baked directly into the hardware. Releasing an Apple TV without that foundation would have made it feel obsolete almost immediately. In a world where competitors are racing to inject AI into every screen and speaker, Apple couldn't afford to ship a dumb box. So they didn't. This is where the rumored hardware leap becomes crucial. The current Apple TV 4K runs on the A15 chip, which is perfectly fine for streaming and casual gaming. But fine is no longer good enough. The 2026 model is expected to skip incremental upgrades entirely and jump straight to the A19 Pro, a chip class that feels absurd for a set-top box until you understand the bigger picture. This isn't about loading Netflix slightly faster or switching apps a fraction of a second quicker. This is about turning the Apple TV into a legitimate computing device, one that can handle on-device AI, advanced graphics, and real-time processing without relying on the cloud. The A19 Pro is rumored to be built on an advanced 2-nanometer process, which means massive gains in efficiency and performance. More importantly, it's expected to feature a next-generation GPU with hardware-accelerated ray tracing. That single detail changes everything. Ray tracing is what allows light, shadows, reflections, and surfaces to behave realistically in a digital environment. It's the reason modern console games look the way they do. Putting that capability into an Apple TV isn't a flex, it's a declaration. Apple isn't just supporting games anymore, it's inviting serious developers to the platform. This is the moment where Apple Arcade stops feeling like an afterthought. With this level of power, AAA games aren't ports in name only. Titles like Resident Evil, Assassin's Creed, and Death Stranding can run natively, smoothly, and beautifully on a device that sits quietly under your TV. Apple doesn't need to replace a PlayStation or Xbox. They just need to be good enough that millions of people decide they don't need a dedicated console at all. For casual and mid-core gamers, that's a massive shift, and it's one that only works if the hardware leap is big enough to last for years. But raw power alone isn't the full story. 
the most overlooked leak might actually be the most important one long term, and that's Apple's custom N1 wireless chip. Connectivity has quietly become one of the biggest bottlenecks in modern homes. Apartments are crowded with networks, devices are constantly fighting for bandwidth, and latency is the invisible killer of good experiences. Wi-Fi 7 changes that equation entirely. It offers higher throughput, dramatically lower latency, and far better stability, especially in dense environments. In practical terms, that means no buffering during massive high-resolution streams, smoother cloud gaming, and a system that just feels responsive all the time. Bluetooth 6 plays an equally important role, especially for gaming and audio. Input lag is the silent enemy of immersion. Even tiny delays between a button press and on-screen action can ruin the experience. Bluetooth 6 reduces that lag to the point where it's effectively imperceptible. It also enables more stable, higher-quality connections with AirPods and controllers. Watching a movie late at night with spatial audio, zero sync issues, and no dropouts becomes effortless. The N1 chip isn't flashy, but it's the glue that makes everything else feel premium. Then there's Siri, the long-standing weak link. For years, talking to your TV has felt like shouting into the void. Simple requests turn into web searches, nuanced questions fall apart, and anything beyond basic commands becomes frustrating. Apple knows this, and they know they can't half-fix it. The rebuild of Siri around large language models is a massive undertaking, especially because Apple insists on processing as much as possible on device for privacy reasons. That's not marketing fluff. It's a real engineering constraint. On-device AI is brutally demanding, and the A15 simply isn't capable of delivering that experience without compromise. With the A19 Pro, everything changes. The neural engine is designed specifically for this kind of workload. Suddenly, Siri isn't just reacting to keywords, it's understanding intent, context, and personal preferences. You don't ask for a specific title anymore. You describe a feeling, a mood, a vague idea of what you want to watch, and it figures it out. It becomes a curator instead of a command line. That's the real, smart, TV moment people have been waiting for, and it only works if the hardware can keep up. The most controversial rumor, the camera, actually makes more sense the longer you think about it. A built-in camera or a dedicated accessory opens the door to presence detection, profile switching, and natural interaction. FaceTime on the TV stops being a workaround and starts feeling native. The Apple TV knows who's in the room, adjusts content automatically, and enforces parental controls without manual switching. Gesture controls stop being a gimmick when they're paired with real use cases, like pausing music with a hand movement or navigating menus without a remote. Apple has been sitting on this technology for years. The 2026 window gives them time to make it feel invisible instead of awkward. All of this ties into Apple's broader home strategy. The HomePod mini is overdue for a refresh, and its limitations are starting to show. Launching a new Apple TV alongside updated HomePods isn't an accident. Together, they form a distributed system for audio, intelligence, and connectivity. Music follows you from room to room. Calls transition seamlessly. Your home becomes a unified space instead of a collection of disconnected gadgets. Add the rumored HomePad smart display into the mix, and the strategy becomes obvious. Apple isn't just updating products. It's assembling a home platform designed to compete directly with Amazon and Google on their own turf. By pushing the Apple TV to 2026, Apple aligns everything. The hardware, the software, the AI, and the ecosystem all land together. That's something they've always done best, and it's why half measures don't fit their playbook. The result is a device that defies simple categorization. It's not just a streaming box. It's part gaming console, part AI assistant, part home automation server. It's the third screen Apple has been quietly chasing for years, sitting alongside the iPhone in your pocket and the Mac on your desk. If you're dealing with a slow, laggy smart TV right now, the temptation to just buy the current Apple TV is understandable. It's still a great product, but it's also at the end of its story. Buying it now is like buying an iPhone days before a major redesign. You're paying full price for technology that's about to be eclipsed. The frustration of waiting is real, but so is the payoff.
The jump from A15 to A19 Pro won't be incremental. It will be transformative. Apple chose to absorb criticism, speculation, and impatience rather than release something that couldn't grow into the future they're building. That's a risky move, but it's also a confident one. When the 2026 Apple TV finally arrives, it won't just upgrade your television experience. It will quietly redefine how your entire home works around you. If you can wait, you should. Hold the line, keep your wallet closed, and let Apple finish setting the trap. Because when it snaps shut, everything else in the living room is going to feel suddenly, painfully outdated.